All right, when you click on one of the files, you'll notice I did click on main.css, so it opened up here, and I could close them back out. So if I click on index.html, we can begin a web page here. And let's just, I don't know if you guys have these pop-ups or not. Um, this one just wants us to give feedback. This one wants Microsoft to use our data. I'm just going to close both those out. All right. If we hit, there's a shortcut that's pretty cool. If you do the exclamation mark and tab or enter, you will get the starting of a web page. And here we can go ahead and maybe make a few changes here. And maybe we'll call this one home page for the title. And maybe we'll throw in an H1 and say, this is my main title. Like that. Okay, so let's make a quick little page there. Notice how we have a black dot up there. That means we've made changes to this file and we haven't saved it yet. So a few different ways to save. You could do file save or right here you can see the shortcut here. It would be a command S on a Mac or control S on a Windows machine. And once I save that, you'll notice that it just has an X now. So that lets me know that I have saved it. I can also use split screen and I could open up two different files here and you see they have, both have their own tab. But if I hit split screen, I can actually see, I'll close one of them out because I had two, I can see them side by side. So if I was working on my CSS over here and I could have my index page open over here. So there is a cool side by side feature and you can just keep opening up different files there. All right, notice this third icon down. I'm going to click on it, and it, it's called a source control icon. We're going to use this later to connect to GitHub pages, where, where that's where we're going to be hosting our web files so that they can be seen live on the Internet. So more on this later. This last one is the extension icon. Visual Studio Code allows you to add additional tools to your installation to help support your development workflow and functionality. So let's type in the search box, live server. And it's going to come up, and the one we want is the one by Ritwick Day. If we click on that, you can see that we can go ahead and install that. And it will go ahead and install that. Okay, we can see that it's installed because we have an uninstall now. All right, let's look at what the live server does for us. If I right click on here, notice there's one called open with live server. What will happen is it will open your default browser and it will show the page rendered as it's going to be seen in a browser, which is pretty cool. So I like to bring the, the window over on one side have my visual code over here on the other side and it's super cool because as you're making changes here so say we add maybe an h2 as a subtitle and I save that it's going to come out and show right there live on the my server. Now notice it's not live on the internet, but it's just on our local machine. Nobody else is going to see that with this address. But it is kind of nice while you're coding to be able to see that change over here. And that was by right clicking and opening with live server. It looks like all L and all O will do that.